Yo, what is up you guys and welcome back to another video. My name is Benji and this is week number 43 of investing in the Robinhood app. We are having another overall green day in the market today. The Dow is up over 300 points, S&P up over half a percent. Disney is going absolutely crazy, up over 10% from just yesterday. Disney announced yesterday that they have over 100 million subscribers to their streaming service and have plans to even expand on that, uh, which has made the stock go up pretty crazy, which is also moving the entire market quite a bit. As far as where my big portfolio is sitting at currently, we're up $572. We're up just 0.22% today. We, we were up a little bit more a bit earlier, but things are selling off a little bit here. We're sitting at $266,012. Over the last week, we're up $3,250. We're up 1.24% over the last week. The last month, we are up $5,719. We're up 2.20% over the last month. The last three months, we're up $14,597. We're up 5.81% over the last three months. And then over the last year all time, we are actually up, you guys. We are in the green. Hooray. We're up $1,089. We're up 0.41%, which, which does feel absolutely awesome. We are in the green. We are in the positive finally in this portfolio, which has been quite a ride. We haven't been in the green since probably early June. So it's been quite some time, but we are back in the green, you guys. Hopefully we'll stay there for some time. As far as all the options, trades, and stocks that I bought today, you guys, first of all, we did make another trade with the SPY ETF. What I went ahead and did was bought to close the sold put that we had on the SPY ETF that was expiring today at the close. I bought it back for $1 so that, of course, the collateral was released. And then, and then what I went ahead and did was sold another one. So we sold another put at a $325 strike price that expires 8 7 so in a few days here. We were able to earn $32 of premium, which is net-net like $31 because, of course, we did have to pay the $1 to close it out. But still, but still $31 of extra cash now in the cash balance. This strike price isn't all that far away from the share price, you guys. We're sitting at 331.81 right now with the SPY. So this one does have a chance to, of course, assign me some shares. We'll have to see what happens. But this does mark the 10th round of us selling puts on the SPY ETF, you guys. We started July 7th. It's currently August 5th right now. And we have been able to earn $277 of premium so far from doing this, which is absolutely awesome. I'm super proud to say that we have been trading options with the SPY ETF now for officially one month. And I think pretty soon here we might up the contracts to two at a time, maybe even different strike prices that would make it a little bit more interesting maybe one strike price that's really close to the share price maybe one strike price that's a little bit further away or something let me know what you guys think down below about that next you guys as far as some new purchases i grabbed one more share of apple at 437.81 per share apple still is kind of sitting around that 435 to 445 range so it isn't really coming down all that much so i'm not going to sit around on the sidelines i want to just keep buying apple pretty consistently here I think I have five more shares of British American Tobacco. I was reading some bullish news on British American Tobacco and some articles on Seeking Alpha, and I just am down quite a bit as far as price goes. I only own like five shares, so I bought five more shares just to lower my price quite a bit. Um, not really that big of a move here or anything, and I might actually sell it in some time, but I'm just trying to take some money, buy some distressed shares in my portfolio to lower my average cost, and then either hold on to it for a while and you know get paid out the dividend, or maybe sell it if the price does go up a little bit. Then you guys, I grabbed 10 more shares of AT&T at $29.90. The play with this is that AT&T is still under that $30 mark. I don't see it sitting down there for too long, though. I could see AT&T jumping back up to $31, $32, $33 over the next up and coming weeks, especially if this bull run does continue. Um, and AT&T being under $30, I do want to have AT&T make up a large position of my overall portfolio. And for how great AT&T is being almost a 7% yielder on the year, um, I really do want to buy some more shares when I do see fit. It's still under my average cost, so I went ahead and bought a little bit more shares, a little bit more aggressive with AT&T today. Then you guys are up two more shares of Microsoft at 213.20. Same story with Apple. It has sort of consolidated and been hovering around a price range uh, for the last few days here. So I don't want to miss out on buying some more Microsoft with it being around the $200 range. So just grabbing a few more shares to up my overall position pretty quickly here. Then before that, I grabbed one more share of Apple at 438.71. I also grabbed two more shares at Intel, just still dollar cost averaging at $49.12. My average cost now for Intel at around 55 shares is slowly coming down. I think it's around $55 now. So much better than where I was at right after Intel's earnings when I was sitting at like $70 average cost or something. So I haven't dollar cost averaging nicely. And I do think Intel will come back long term. So here's overall where the portfolio is hitting you guys. I want to show you all the stocks that I have the most equity in, starting from the most to the least. So Verizon is number one, followed by Realty Income, Chevron, Coca-Cola, Wells Fargo. There are some really good names on my top 10 list, but there are a few that I wouldn't really want to be there. Wells Fargo definitely being one of them. Wells Fargo, we are selling calls on right now. I own a lot of shares, so we are making a little bit of money in between the time where we hopefully have to sell it out and get rid of it, because right now our average cost is pretty far away from where the share price is. But I do think over time we'll have another... 
opportunity long term to sell out of Wells Fargo, hopefully sometime soon in the future. But other than that, you guys, the most of my portfolio is coming together pretty nicely. Chevron is another one that I'm not the biggest fan of, but it's not the worst um, as far as the oil stocks go, honestly. Uh, we are also selling calls on Chevron, though, so we are willing to get rid of this stock for the right price, of course. And what's pretty cool is Apple has already been climbing its way up pretty quickly here as far as overall equity, as far as my overall portfolio goes, which is crazy because just about a few weeks ago, I didn't really have any Apple in the portfolio, but, but we are already up to over 20 shares of Apple, which I'm really proud of. Um, and again, you guys, Apple, I'm not really too worried about the price. I just want to have it be an anchor in my portfolio, you know, for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And then after Apple, we have some smaller stuff like ExxonMobil, Pembina, Pfizer, 3M, Microsoft, IBM. I mean, we do have some really good names in this portfolio. It is coming along quite nicely. I have been trimming off some fat, as you guys know, and I will continue to do so. I actually did almost sell one more thing today. I decided against it because I do feel like the holding might have some more juice in it uh, to keep going up in price a little bit more. But we are keeping an eye on that, you guys. I do want to keep consolidating the portfolio overall. And I really do want to get this portfolio in line, especially during this bull run that we're going through right now, you guys. There is a lot of opportunity to sell a lot of some holdings at a little to no loss hopefully and to put that money into something a little bit higher quality next you guys i want to show you my smaller growth portfolio this is on m1 finance we're currently sitting at 1387 dollars and 72 cents we're up over 117 dollars and we're up almost 14 percent as far as overall gains the cash balance is at zero and i do want to make another deposit in the next few days here i think i'll make it for tomorrow so maybe the money will be there the following day so you guys definitely please comment down below what stocks you think I should buy more of or if I should add any new stocks in this portfolio. I really want this portfolio to be very interactive with you guys. I want you guys to help me really build out and you know tell me what to buy in this portfolio. So definitely please comment down below what you guys think I should add to this smaller growth portfolio. But overall, here's how the portfolio is looking. Everything for the most part is in the green, it looks like besides Shopify and yeah, that's everything. So everything is in the green and by quite a bit. I mean, a lot of these are up over 10%. I mean, there's a few of them that are up just a little bit, but the growth portfolio is looking good. These are all really, really high quality companies. It's honestly like hard to bet against a lot of these companies. I'm pretty certain that this smaller portfolio will be a sure bet and I think we will see some crazy growth here in the future. But again, you guys comment down below what you guys think I should add next. All right, guys, before I go today, let's go over some viewer questions and comments. If you guys ever do have any questions or comments for me, leave them down below. It could be about investing, business, real estate, anything at all. Just leave something down below. All right, and the first one today is from Sohil. This channel is great. Have you ever thought about doing some informational videos? So thank you, Sohil. I'm really glad that you enjoyed my channel. And as far as informational videos, uh, I mean, for the most part, my videos that I make, I really hope that there is some sort of information that comes out of them. I'm more so just documenting what I'm doing and what I'm learning in the stock market. But I do feel like, of course, there is a lot of information and facts uh, that you can take from my videos. As far as traditional step-by-step -step informational type videos, like, like how to connect a bank account to Robinhood or how to make your first options trade or, or how to buy and sell a stock on Robinhood, I mean, those videos are pretty cool and I think that they probably will get a lot more views than me just, you know, kind of showcasing what I'm doing here in my portfolio. Uh, but for me, it doesn't really excite me all that much. And I do feel like there's already so many informational videos out on YouTube from other people. And I'd like to be honest and transparent with you guys telling you that I'm no expert on a lot of this stuff. I'm just a guy that's trying to learn as I go and really trying to document my entire process, which is what I've been doing for the last 43 weeks now. 43 weeks ago, I came on YouTube um, and basically told you guys that I'm starting this Robinhood portfolio. I don't really know all that much of what, what I'm doing, but I'm going to learn. It's going to take some time, and I really want to just document and showcase all that I'm learning, all my wins, all my losses. And a lot of you guys have liked following along with it so far, so that, and that's been a lot of fun for me. So I do think I will continue to include informational stuff inside of my videos for sure. But as far as just making like one-off informational type videos, I don't really think it's for me. And you guys, the next one is from John. Why do you need to get so many shares of Apple before the split? It's the exact same value before or after the split. It doesn't matter if you buy now or after. So John, I made an entire video the other day when Apple did announce the split, which I went over in detail, some of the reasons why I feel like I want to buy more shares of Apple before the split. But I'll gladly give you a few more reasons now. First of all, Apple has not been a stock that I've had a lot of in my portfolio for quite some time, which is my own fault. And I do wish that I would have bought Apple, of course, when it was cheaper earlier in the year. Uh, but I was just slacking. I was worried about other stocks, other companies, etc. So, I, So as I said in a video like a week ago, I just wanted to make it a goal to get a lot of Apple in my portfolio before the split. I'm not necessarily saying that anything's going to happen happen during the split, of course, is I'm not saying that the, the price is going to shoot up magically the day that it splits. Obviously, a $400 stock that splits in four and turns into four $100 stocks is the exact same thing as one just $400 stock. I'm totally aware with that, and I do agree, but I do think, in my opinion, that with the stock split, I do think that Apple is going to see a lot of demand for people wanting to buy it. 
I mean, even in our Discord group, everyone in there is trying to get a lot of Apple right now. That's all everyone's really talking about. And that's obviously a small sample size of overall, you know, investors. But I do feel like a lot more people will want to get their hands on some Apple stock when it does split just because of the psychology of it. Again, not saying that it's worth anything more or less, of course. But more or less, the reason I keep on saying that I need to get so much Apple before the split is just because it's a personal goal of mine. It doesn't have anything to do with getting more because it's going to benefit me at all. But I do feel like it will benefit me. I feel like the faster I get a lot of shares of Apple in my portfolio, the faster I can make it a big anchor in my portfolio. And then come back 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, I think that would be a really, really good decision. So that's exactly what I'm talking about there. And you guys, last one today is from Porkchop. Are you concerned about the possibility of a 10% correction or even a crash in the up and coming weeks or months? I've seen articles and videos pop up and I was just curious on what you think of this. So Porkchop, keep in mind all the videos or articles that we see, I mean, I see them too, about the next stock market crash, the end of the world is near. All those videos and all those articles are using clickbait for the most part. It does draw in readers, it does draw in viewers a lot more. If I made videos here on YouTube, every video titling it some super dramatic thing like that, so you guys can only imagine, I'd probably get more views. I don't think people would really enjoy watching my videos all that much because if all I'm talking about is that the end of the world is near and sell all your stuff or what we see in a lot of other videos, I don't really think it's that enjoyable to watch. Or I don't really think that negative outlook on things is that enjoyable to watch at least not for me personally so that's one thing to keep in mind of course take it with a grain of salt whenever you do see those videos or articles not saying that they're not true of course i don't know what's going to happen in the next up and coming weeks months or years of course i'm just saying that that's kind of how media does things as far as my opinion with a future correction or even crash in the near or long-term future i think that it is very possible i think there's a lot going on in the market right now that is sort of setting up for you know a smaller correction or maybe a larger correction i do think that there is a lot going on especially with the election coming up i mean there's a lot of stuff going on you guys that's right in front of our eyes but for me personally as a long-term investor it doesn't make all that much of a difference because let's say i buy you know two hundred thousand dollars worth of stocks and the market corrects for three years and my value of my stocks goes down to 120,000 or 150,000 for the next three years. So, okay, by that point, I'm 30 years old. So then let's say year four, it starts going back up, year five, you, you kind of see what I'm saying there. So over time, I do think that the stock market is a great vehicle to put money into, invest into high quality companies. And it doesn't make too much difference for a long-term investor. I'm not looking at my portfolio on the daily really worrying about it all that much. I mean, I do pay attention to my portfolio a lot because I have fun doing it and because I love making these videos and because I'm just really into it, honestly. But as far as financially speaking, my portfolio does not make up a majority of my overall net worth, um, which makes it very easy to not worry about it all that much. Now, if I had my entire net worth in this portfolio, uh, you know, questions like this and ideas like this would be very, very scary to me because, because of the idea of, yeah, I might be losing everything if there is a crazy correction or or if there is a big crash sometime in the future. And, and that's why I always tell myself and tell you guys to really pay attention to what type of money you're putting into the stock market. Make sure that it is not money that you need. Make sure it's not money that you need, you know, in next week or next month or next year, even maybe. Again, I'm not an expert on this. This isn't financial advice, of course, but I really just feel like it is a lot easier to stomach the up and coming dips and valleys if you don't have a good amount of your net worth in the stock market. Because I'll tell you something, if I did have a lot of my net worth in the stock market right now, I'd probably wouldn't be able to sleep that well at night because there is just so much uncertainty. But with the amount of money that I have in my portfolios right now, I'm okay with it. I'm ready to hold on for the long term. Again, you guys, if there's a dip or a crash over the next three to five years, a lot of us are very young. It's not going to matter all that much come 15 years from now. So unless you guys are like 50, maybe 55, 60, 65 years old, then yeah, I would be pretty careful because the next three to maybe, you know, 10 years. But I think we look at the past and it really has shown that long term investing into the stock market in high quality stocks is a great vehicle to create some wealth. So I'm in it for the long run. But that is going to do it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much as always for stopping by. Please, please drop a like in this video if you guys did like this video. Also leave a comment or question down below and I'll answer a few more of them in tomorrow's video. Make sure you guys subscribe if you guys haven't already to follow along with the journey. I show you guys what I do every single day in the stock market. I show you guys all the trades I make, tell you guys why I do them. I pretty much give you an opportunity to learn through me, all my wins, all my losses and everything else. Also, you guys, we do have a dedicated Discord server now, which is 100% free. It's all about investing. There's almost 2,000 people in the Discord now, which is pretty crazy. There's dividend investors, there's day traders, options traders, cryptocurrency guys, business owners, real estate agents, all kinds of people in here, you guys. So stop by the Discord. It is free to join. The link is down below in my description. Thank you guys again so much for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next video.